Creating multi-story stairs in Revit got a lot more powerful in this release. There's several new enhancements for us to talk about. Um, the entire concept of what a multi-story stair is has been completely redesigned and revamped. So um, I'm uh, going to demonstrate uh, creating a multi-story stair here using this very simple little stair tower. And I'll start by just selecting an existing stair. So the first thing you do is you just create your first stair. Um, when you select it, uh, previously, there was a parameter on the properties palette right here that said multi-story top level. That parameter has been removed. Uh, it's no longer available. What we have instead is a multi-story stairs panel on the ribbon and a select levels button here. So I'm going to click that. Now, this will prompt you, because I'm working in 3D, it will prompt me to go to either a section or an elevation view. So in this case, I have my north-south section already open, so I'll just simply go to that view by clicking Open View here. And you'll see that what it does is it kind of grays out the model and it highlights all the levels. Now, we started with a stair that was at level 2 going up to level 3. So levels 2 and 3 are grayed out because they're already part of the multi-story stair. Um, but using any selection method, I can just simply come in here and select any additional levels that I want to add to this stair tower. Now, I could use my control key and also add in level one, uh, but because I already have a stair down at level one, I'm going to ignore that one and just simply add the upper levels to my stair tower and click finish here. Now, similar to how it behaved in the previous release, it will copy all of the stair and um, railing geometry up to those upper levels. But if you look carefully at my section view, what you'll notice is that I have different floor to floor heights here. So my first two uh, floors in the stair tower are at 12 and all of the levels above that are at 10. Now, uh, previously that would have created a problem for multi-story top level, but the new um, stair tower feature um, has no problem with that whatsoever. So the way that it manages the creation of uh, a multi-story stair that has different level heights is it will group the individual stairs within the stair tower based on their level heights. So if I move my mouse over here, I'm going to deselect and um, highlight, you'll see that what it highlights initially is the entire multi-story stair. It kind of puts a dash box around it. You can see that actually really well here in 3D. So if I highlight in the 3D view, I get this dashed 3D box around the entire multi-story stair. Now I could select that and it will select the whole thing. Or I'll deselect it, I can tab in and notice that it groups the stairs based on their level heights. So the bottom two stairs are grouped together into one group. And if I highlight up here and tab, all the stairs above that are grouped into a second group. Okay, so it does this automatically. Now, those groupings will be uh, dynamic, as will the stairs themselves. So let me deselect everything, select the stair tower, and notice that on the ribbon, the um, button now says connect disconnect levels. So after you've created a multi-story stair, this button changes and when you click it, let's go back to the section view, um, what you can do here now is choose between either connecting additional levels or removing levels that you've already added. So let's try removing a level here. So I'm gonna choose disconnect levels and maybe I'll disconnect this level right here, level six. Now, when I click finish, um, that level gets removed from the stair, and if I zoom in a little here, the result is that the stair on level 5 now has to go all the way up to level 7. Now, this is very powerful because previously it wouldn't do this, right? You'd get an error message that says your stair is too short and you need to add more treads and risers, but now what Revit will do is it will automatically adjust the height of the stair um, to match the new level configuration. Now, you might still need to do some work on this stair if you were going to keep that because that configuration might not fit the surrounding geometry, but uh, the fact that it adjusts to the height is what I wanted you to see there. Now, if I press tab over one of the other stairs from the previous group, okay, notice that they're still grouped together. So even though we've removed level six, the other group, the other stairs that were part of the 10 foot height group are still part of that group. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is um, select the multi-story stair, go back to connect, disconnect, and I'm going to reconnect level six and finish. And now I'll, I'll deselect, tab in, 
and notice that it puts all of those upper stairs back into that single height group. So this is very dynamic. Okay. So um, another thing that you can do is you can change the heights of your uh, levels and the stairs will adjust accordingly. So let's take our level six again here. And uh, I'm going to just take this dimension and change that to 11 instead of 10. Now, I'm getting a warning about the railing. I'm just going to ignore that and kind of click anywhere to deselect. Notice that I now have 11, then 9, and the other ones are at 10. So what did that do? Well, if I highlight the multi-story stair, tab in, notice that again, the unaffected stairs are still part of the original 10-foot height group. But now, each of these has become an independent stair. So that's a little different than removing level six, but what it does is it makes the stair from five to six unique and the stair from six to seven unique. Okay. So uh, in this case, I'm going to actually undo that. Okay. To get that back again, um, back to my original group. Now, the other thing that you're going to notice is when I tab in and select that height group, each of the individual stairs has a little push pin icon associated with it. So you can actually click on that little push pin and remove one of the stairs from the group or make it unique. You're kind of like saying, I want to override or I want to customize this particular stair instance. Now I'm going to zoom in here in 3D. I'm going to do this um, change right here in 3D. With that stair selected, I'll click the edit stairs button. So now I'm in stair edit mode. Let's just do something that will be very visually obvious. Okay, so I'm going to select the landing here and it's currently at a relative height of five. Let me increase that to seven. Okay, um, and that will have a pretty dramatic impact on the configuration of that particular stair. Now, when I click finish, okay, I'm getting a warning um, again about the railings. Okay, so I am going to um, adjust that uh, right now, but notice that only that one stair uh, was modified. Uh, from the group. Okay. So another new enhancement is that railings also understand multi-story stairs. So let's do this. I'm going to take this railing, this one, and this one that belong to this customized stair. And I'm just going to delete those. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go to the railing button here and do place on stair or ramp. Now, if I were to select the multi-story stair tower, it would actually add a railing to the entire tower, all of the stairs. You can see it in the section view. Um, and of course, it ignores the railings that were already there. So we probably wouldn't want double railings, right? So I'm going to undo that. Okay. But if I use that same command and just use my tab key, I can actually tab in and pick just the customized stair and add new railings to it. So would it be possible to select the railings and edit their sketches and modify them? Sure, but sometimes it's actually gonna be easier to just create a new one like I'm doing right here. Now let's go back to the uh, remainder of the stairs that were still grouped together in the 10 foot group. Okay, so I'll select that group and you can see that there's still four stairs within that group. I'll click edit stairs. Now. When you do edit stairs on a height group like that, it'll just go to the lowest one. So you see it, it uh, brought me to the one down here on the fourth floor. Now, this modification is going to be a little difficult to do in 3D. So what I'm going to do is expand my floor plans over here and open up my level four floor plan. And I'll select the landing. And again, I want to do something that's noticeable, something that we'll be able to see very clearly. So even though this doesn't make a lot of sense given the wall geometry, I'm just going to ignore that and just kind of stretch this landing out a little bit and click finish. Now, when I click back over into the 3D view, you're gonna see that the landings extended in all four of the stairs. So the change applies to the entire stair tower group. It did not apply to this lower stair tower group. So each of those groups will have their own customizations. Now, what if I decided that I no longer wanted this one to be custom anymore? So you can tab in and do you see how the little push pin icon is still there? So at any time you can repin it. Now I should caution you that when you repin it, it will throw away all your customizations. There's not going to be any way to get them back other than undo. Okay. But in this case, maybe that's what I want to do and I'll repin it and notice that it rejoins that stair back to the group. It's now part of the overall group and 
um, it's got the landing modification that we applied to the entire group. Now, I do have these orphaned railings now, so I can just sort of delete those. But notice that because it's part of the group, the original railings got re-added to it. So uh, no big deal to just remove the railings that I don't need. So the last thing I want to show you is what happens when you open up a file that was created in a previous version that used the old style multi-story top level. So if you've ever used multi-story top level um, in the previous release, it looks something like this. Uh, with the stair selected on the properties palette, you had that multi-story top level parameter there and you would set the uh, height level that you wanted for that. So let's open up a file that was created in a previous version. I've got one right here. And we'll let it upgrade. And if Revit encounters a stair within an upgraded file that use that multi-story top level parameter, so what it will do is it will just automatically convert that to a multi-story stair. So notice that I have a multi-story stair here and I have another one here. So if you open up existing files, they automatically become multi-story uh, stairs and then all of the other functionality we talked about will apply. So I hope you can see that working with stair towers or other uh, multiple story stair uh, configurations will now be much easier using this new and enhanced functionality that allows you to associate the stairs directly to the levels add and remove them, group them automatically, and even make customizations on a per-level basis as design needs dictate.